Hello and welcome to this episode in our series on mastering deep learning with Python and um, we are still continuing our discussion on using NumPy for um, vectorized numerical computations and um, things are getting deep as um, time goes by okay so we are at the point where we're going to talk about fancy I'm um, sorry fancy indexing and boolean mask and this follows the video from memory views and copies because if you do fancy indexing you get a copy instead of getting a view so a view is um, a slice of what is actually in memory and that is why if you modify a view it also goes ahead to modify what is in memory and a copy is just what it is is a copy so it is a standalone copy of data that is obtained from the original array and modifying it doesn't affect the original array now numpy also has fancy indexing and um, in addition to basic single integer indexing and slicing operation numpy um, also support advanced indexing routines called fancy indexing and if you don't know about indexing i want you to start by watching the video on indexing and so through this um, fancy indexing thing we can use a tuple or a list of objects of non-contiguous integer indexes to return desired array element and um, since this fancy indexing can be performed with non-contiguous sequences it cannot return a view because a view is a contiguous um, um, slice of memory and so fancy indexing is always going to return a copy of the array and is an important thing for you to keep in mind so that you don't do fancy indexing modify the the resulting slice and expect the original array to change that is a long talk let's do an example so i'm going to say data is equal to np dot a range um, let's say 10 and then i will reshape it to um, a two by five array okay let's print data and see what's in there so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, that is good. So let's say um, I want to select just the, the first and last columns of this array. How do I do that with fancy indexing? Okay, I just say data and uh, what's going to happen is I'll say I want all the rows but then for the columns, you see that I'm specifying a list of index indices. So I'll tell it that I want the first and then, so this is column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I want the first and then the last. Let's see what, what's, what's happening here. So you can see that, I mean, you have to watch the indexing video to understand what's going on here. I don't want to um, repeat myself explaining what has already been explained in the previous video. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using the column to say I'm interested in all the rows. But when it comes to the in the, um, the columns, I am using a list to submit the indices that I'm interested in. So I said I'm interested in um, index 0 and index 4. That is why I'm getting 0, 5 and then 4, 9. Because you can see that the column 0 is 0, 5. Column 4 is 4, 9. Let's change the numbers and then maybe to help you understand it better. So let's say I change this to um, 2 and 0. Let's see what happened. So if I do 2 and 0, what's happening? And I uh, It comes to the... The, the third column, it has two and then seven, and then it goes to the first column, which has zero and five. So this is the fancy indexing. I mean, if, if this was more than two rows, I could also use a list to specify the, the indexes of the rows that I'm interested in. And as you can see, I selected columns two and zero. This is not a contiguous block of memory. And so what it returns is not a view. Let me store this in um, something called slice. So slice, okay. And then let's see if mp.measure memory data and slice. And it's false because I am doing fancy indexing here. I don't get a view, I get a copy automatically. So this is the most important thing I want you to keep in mind. If you don't do the regular indexing where you use single integer to specify indices that you are interested in and you do fancy indexing and the, 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 the time you know you are doing fancy indexing is if you are using a list to specify the indices that you are interested in. Okay. 
once we get that slice it does not share memory location with the original array because the indexing is such that it is not from a contiguous block of memory and so numpy automatically does the indexing and returns it to you as a copy understood okay so the next thing that i want to um discuss with you is the ability to also do boolean indexing or you can use boolean mask for indexing i'm going to have a special video on um, boolean indexing when we start talking about um, comparison operators but for this video i also want to um I mean start talking about boolean indexing because it also does something similar to fancy indexing which returns a copy automatically okay so let's see our data okay so data is what it is and then if i come here and i say i want um i want everything that is greater than six let, let, let's do that and see so i'll say greater than six so i'll say greater than six mask is equal to data where the item is greater than six don't forget that numpy implement vectorized operations of every mathematical operation that you can think of so when i say data is greater than six i'm checking if every item like i'm checking for every item in data that is greater than six so what's going to happen is greater than six mask is going to store boolean is, is going to be an array of booleans and where it is true it means that particular position has an element that is greater than six okay so let's print out um, greater than six mask and see so you can see that zero is false because it's not greater than six one false two three four five six six is not greater than six so it's false and then um seven is true eight is true and then nine is true so i hope you get the basic idea here you can use um, these comparison operators to get a boolean mask and the beautiful thing is you can also use this boolean mask to select from the array so if i do um, greater than six mask is equal to data greater than six what i'm saying is give me a mask but a mask is just going to be an array of booleans that tells you true or false and where it is true it means that particular index or that particular item in the array matches the condition the condition here is i want things that are greater than six okay so now that i have this mask i can use the mask to actually select the items that are greater than six and to do that i just say data and then i pass in the mask so numpy can be um a bit tricky to learn at times because there are several ways of doing one thing and so my, my advice is um you learn these different ways and then you stick to first of all the one that is convention within the community so that when you write code people will understand and then secondly it comes down to personal choice where you are doing um, things that you really understand very well okay so you can see that now i said data and then i pass in the mask so what is happening here is numpy is using the mask to determine which indexes um item issue return back when he sees true it will include that when he sees false it will exclude it so when it went through this mask it saw that it is only index seven eight and nine i mean that matches the condition greater than six and so it returns the array so basically this is telling me all the items in my array that are greater than six and like I said, this is not the video on Boolean indexing. Um, indexing. So I'm going, to, I'm going to create a video on Boolean indexing. The whole idea is to understand that when you do fancy indexing and, bully, and you use Boolean mask for indexing, you get a, um, a copy, not a view. And so they don't share memory location. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're understanding it. Leave your comment and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.